Welcome to another 88K model railroad video. In this video, we'll discuss Rock Rails WIO or the wireless input output feature. WIO allows you to use the GPIO pins from the MCUs. You're able to connect into the pins. The pins will then trigger relays, whatever you configure to it, and then you're able to control various accessories remotely. The um, wireless capabilities actually eliminates a lot of the headaches from uh, wiring into your central um, modules. So the unit comes in, or the service or feature comes in two flavors. You have the WIO, which supports the ESP8266 and 32 microcontrollers or the Raspberry Pi Pico W. Now the other uh, type is the WIO Pi which supports the Raspberry Pi Zero W's and the Raspberry Pi 3 and 4. Now with this service you're able to implement a lot on your layout. You're able to set up outputs for your LEDs, inputs uh, for the feedbacks, occupancy detectors, servos, stepper motors, RFIDs, L LEDs, displays, the, all the way down to sound. So you can do a lot uh, by adding the, this, these modules or utilizing the WIO, the wireless uh, input output. So now let's look and see how it works. Okay, so the WIO, how does it work? So it basically has a microcontroller that has a load on it. That load or software is downloaded, copied to the microcontroller. The microcontroller will boot from it. Then it logs into a Wi-Fi uh, network that is connected to the RockRail server. Once it logs into the network, then it communicates with the server. It then establishes itself with RockRail, and it becomes a node or a client of RockRail. And because you have access to the GPIO pins, you can send commands back and forth to either activate a relay or respond to a relay. Now. There's one part, you have to configure the MCU. You can do that through the interface in RockRail. It allows you to connect into the Pi Pico or the ESP32, then uh, write in the configurations. Once you set the configurations, then it's stored onto the MCU so whenever it's powered on it automatically logs in and connects into the RockRail server. So now let's look at the topography. Okay so just as the image uh, with the topography you have your microcontrollers deployed throughout your layout they are then wired into a bank or pool of relays that are connected into your building structures uh, devices. Now they dial in to the Wi-Fi network that you have. That particular network also has the Pi, or not the Pi, but the PC that runs your RockRail server. That's how all three of the components interact. You have the the clients connecting into the Wi-Fi router. The router is also connected to the PC. It creates and provides the network and then the server is able to communicate with the clients. Now the wiring or the deployment of the MCUs is dependent upon just the location and just actually applying power to it. Then you connect the GPIO pins and you can go from city to city on your layout and they can communicate with one another. So now let's look at the installation of the feature. Okay, so installing WIO, and I'm going to use the Pi Pico in my discussion here. 
the Pi Pico, I have them, and I have a demo board that's also built that we'll look at. But it's basically the same process in general. You need to download the files. There are two files that you need. One of them is the actual WIO file. It is in the download section of RockRail. And then the second one is the Flash uh, Nuke uh, UF2. Now, I'm adding or saying that this is a kind of a requirement because if you have an issue or something goes wrong, the Nuke file will set the Raspberry Pi back to its default configuration. And that way you can do the installation all over again. So it's important to have that file. If you do the Google search on the flash underscore nuke uh, dot UF2, you'll find uh, the link that goes to Adafruit and uh, it has a file. You can download it there. Now, how you install it is the Raspberry Pi Pico has a boot uh, button. And as you power or connect in the USB connection to the Pico, you press that button and it will configure the Pi as a flash drive in your PC. Once you see the flash drive, you're able to take the WIO Pico file and copy it to the drive once the file is copied, then the MCU or the Pico will read that file and configure itself. And you'll see the disk drive. It will no longer be a disk drive and it will be a client. And it will automatically disconnect itself. Then once it's disconnected, then you're able to go into RockRail and access the... WIO window and then it has a maintenance tab and when you connect into the maintenance tab you're able to scan the Pi via or the Pico via the scan command and connect in to the COM port and then that will give you access to go and perform the configuration of the Pi. So it's pretty easy it's cut and dry uh, once you see the process, you, you'll see that it's not uh, not a big deal. So now let's go into RockRail and look at it. Okay, so now we're in RockRail. And we have the Raspberry Pi Pico W here. If we open the file manager, we'll see that the... Pi Pico is a like a flash drive. So now if you remember that one file, that nuke file, if you have problems, then just take that file, copy it into the Pi Pico, and then it will go back to factory. Now let's see, I have the files here. I think it's down here. Now if I just drag and drop the file the WIO file into the flash into the Pico it will copy the files over then once it copies the file over it will reboot itself and it will turn into a node and then now you see it's no the the drive is no longer there available so let's close this out and now we can go into the WIO interface or the window, we click on maintenance. Now I have the Pi Pico connected up to my USB connection, right? So if I do a scan device, what it'll do is it'll scan all of my COM ports. Now I can go in and collect or connect into COM port 9. I can connect to it here. And now you saw it just read everything that was on the Pi, the configuration file that was in that Pico, the Pi Pico. So once we've got it connected, now what we can do is to do a scan. 
and it will scan for all the networks because now we're setting up the the WAN to get our Wi-Fi connection established so here click the 88k then I put in the password here and then I press the set so now it will write to the configuration file and then now it's trying to log in and now it logged in the Wi-Fi gave it the its IP address and now it's ready to go here next step is to add the IP for the server Rockwell server so that's the IP of the PC that's running Rockwell so I enter that hit set so now it's writing that in and now let's configure this to 38 now remember the default is 33 and it's similar to the the decoders the address 3 for the decoders that's the, the default in every 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 decoder comes in with with the address of 33 pre-program or thir 3 program and that's the same way with the WIO but it's 33 so if you don't change the 33 then you won't be able to add another um, another uh, client so let's go here we set that up So now it's set, and ooh, I made a mistake here. I have this automatic setup, and now that's why you see it keeps trying to dial into that R2R net. So now I need to go back and take that out. And let me read 92.168.8.161. Now let's set this again. So yeah, so remember, leave these unchecked, and that by default, this automatic come pops up. Okay, so now that's set. So now, let's go in and... Oh, one more thing. So you see here, these are the IOs, and now if we go in and click on this A bank or the first one, you could see it has the settings and now I want to go to B that's going to give me the sensors and I'm just going to turn all these or configure all of these to a sensor okay you do okay then set and then we'll do a reboot So now we can go OK. So now let's go in and wait for it to reboot. OK, so. Now what we can do is to go back into the WIO and then now you see it pops up here and it's populated with the configuration and um, oh look here you see the O's so that first bank I didn't set it up right here for the for the sensors so let's go back into the setup and then Let's change that. So I may have not set the page. And let's go back here and then query. There we go. So now you see it's set. So now they're all set up as sensors. 
So here we can go OK. And now that's how you configure the Raspberry Pi Pico W with uh, WIO. OK, so now we can go to the bench and then we'll look at the modules itself. So let's do that.